What's going on, U.S. History kids? Mr. Tomei here. Uh, another video today. This one's important because you have to watch this because it's for your homework assignment. Um, we're going to be talking today about uh, marching to victory in Europe, uh, kind of what happens after D-Day um, and how the war in Europe wraps up in a little less than a year, actually. Um, make sure when you think you found answers to questions to pause, write down your answer, do what you got to do to make sure you complete all the questions for the assignment. Okay, let's get to it. So after D-Day, um, you know, this important invasion of mainland Europe, um, it was a big crushing blow to Hitler and Nazi Germany. At this point, they're now surrounded kind of on all sides from the allies. There's the invading allied force of the US and the British and now kind of re-liberated Italy, um, who is now working against the, uh, the Germans and they're coming from the South. Uh, you have the Soviet Union coming in from the East um, where there's a lot of intense fighting. We're going to talk about that later. Um, and there's also, uh, uh, you have um, now with D-Day, you have the allies of, you know, United Kingdom, Canada, the United States, and now, you know, lib a re-liberated or a liberated uh, France. So now Germany, which is in the middle of all this, is getting surrounded. Um, and ultimately, the biggest thing you want to take away from this is that Kind of like in World War I, it really takes the U.S. getting involved to end the war because the United States at this point is a powerful country. It had rapidly uh, invested in its military and it just proved to be too much, too many enemies, too many angles, too many sides to fight uh, for the Germans to, to stand victory uh, in World War II. Doesn't mean it was easy though. Uh, there are a lot of casualties along the way in the year it takes to get from D-Day to the death of Hitler and the fall of Berlin, the fall of Nazi Germany. Uh, there's a couple infamous battles, but probably and we could talk about that forever, but I'll just give you one. The most infamous one is probably the Battle of the Bulge. It happened in the winter of 1944, kind of through 1945. Um, kind of in like a last desperate, last ditch effort. Hitler tried to launch a really massive counterattack. Um, and tried to split the Allied forces on the West in two. It was in the middle of the winter. It was cold. There was a lot of like limited supplies. The conditions were really harsh. Um, uh, but, you know, ultimately uh, the Germans being surrounded, running out of supplies, kind of the conditions themselves um, didn't favor their chance of victory. This kind of shows you a map of kind of what happened. The purple line represents kind of like the battling line and kind of where the front of the line was. Uh, the blue arrows will represent the allies. The red arrows represent Nazi Germany. And so you can tell they did a really big, massive rush. And what they were trying to do is they were trying to split the allies in two, right? If you can split your enemy, you have a better chance of maybe defeating them. Um, unfortunately though, this is just another uh, image, right? Um, while initially it did push back the line, it almost kind of split in two. It wasn't fully successful. Um, and the Germans just, again, limited supplies, limited resources. This is just an example of the conditions, wintertime, freezing fighting. The majority of people died um, because of the conditions. Uh, you know, in the whole, it was about a month long battle and it cost the US nearly about 20,000 lives. There's over 50,000 wounded, and then you can add on another 25,000 captured or uh, missing. Germany, the numbers are a little less concrete, but around 100,000 men were either wounded, captured, or killed. And that's at that point, the majority of their military force. Um, and at this point, that was it. There really wasn't much of a standing military presence left for the, um, the allies to deal with. And the Germans were just spread too thin. They were running out of resources. They were running out of men. It just, it, you know, as, when Italy fell and then when D-Day happened, it was all but over. Um, and so with this knowledge, the Allied powers met. And they met two, they're going to meet two times. So the first meeting is actually a little bit after the Battle of the Bulge, because at that point it became clear, okay, we're going to win this thing in the coming months. But a lot of questions had to be asked, right? What are we going to do when we get to Berlin? And what are we going to do with Germany, a country that is now twice in most of these people's lifetimes 
have gone completely rogue and have really started world wars um, or at least been the main players. Um, there's a lot of main points that are discussed. You know, there's a lot of territorial exchanges from around the world. What are we going to do? Are we going to punish them economically again? How are we going to control their military? Uh, there was a lot of things about what are we going to do to convicted like Nazi leaders, right? They talk about, they agree upon that they'll be sent to death if you're a Nazi leader and there'll be prison for other Nazi types of people. Um, what are you going to do to the people that supported the Nazi regime, right? Just the general public. How are you going to deal with that? Um, you know, obviously a lot of this also has to do with the knowledge of the Holocaust that is currently going on even to this point. Um, and we'll talk more about the Holocaust later, but there is a knowledge that we know that many millions of German people were okay with that. Um, but yet, do we imprison them? Do we kill them? And all these things were debated and talked about. I mean, there was serious conversations about what to do with Germany. The most important part though, that I want you to focus on for this class is that the most important thing to come out of this meeting was how Germany was going to be split up and then how the capital was going to be split up by the allies. Because there was a lot of intense debates because everyone wanted a little bit of different piece of Germany because each part had like more of an advantage or, you know, kind of had the pros and cons. So eventually what we get to, and those are the leaders here. You have Winston Churchill, who's the leader of the United Kingdom, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, leader of the United States. And then that's Joseph Stalin on the right. And this is at the Yalta conference, cold conditions, right? It's in February. And ultimately this is kind of what happens. So <clears throat> this area is shaded in color, which is blue, orange, green, and red is what Germany would be split up in. The United Kingdom would have control of the Northwestern part of Germany makes sense because that's the closest that it is to it, right? Just across a body of water. The French would have access. That little country there eventually becomes France. So don't worry about that flag. So the blue area is France. They control the southwestern part of Germany, which is again, they share a border with Germany. So that makes sense. The United States, we get Southern Germany, um, extending all the way to like the Italian border. And then Eastern Germany, is will be controlled by the Soviet Union. Um, they also get Poland gets pieces. That flag right here is Poland. They get some pieces. The Soviet Union gets actually some a, a little bit of what used to be German territory up here, and they get like more access to a port. And then you're also going to notice this multicolored area in the Soviet Union territory, and that is Berlin, because Berlin itself is also split up into four ways because Berlin is the big capital city and no one, none of the allies, while they're all allies, none of them equally trust each other to be fully responsible um, to control the capital and have that much power over what Germany will become after the war. Um, and so a lot of it was mistrust about what the Soviet Union was going to do. So they split up Berlin kind of begrudgingly the Soviet Union wanted for itself. But they split it up evenly, and, this, and so Berlin itself gets split up. This is going to be important because when we talk about the Cold War, the borders of Europe are dramatically altered because of what comes out of this conference and the relationship that exists between what becomes like the Cold War, which is the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe, so everything over here, and kind of capitalist Western Europe and the United States. Um, and we'll talk more about that. Um, kind of getting here to the end. Mussolini, in case you want to know what happens to him, uh, he dies, he gets executed. Um, he loses power. He's in prison, but eventually Nazi Germany, you know, comes down and captures Italy. But then that doesn't really last that long because the Allies invade and then liberate Italy. And so during this time, Mussolini... You know, he was in prison. Then when the Nazis took power for a little bit, he was like a puppet leader, but he had no power. The Nazis had just extended their territory, right? Um, so ultimately, as the Allies are beginning to liberate Italy and Nazi Germany is beginning to retreat, um, right? Mussolini now knows he's kind of out of friends, out of options, out of any protection. So he tries to flee to Switzerland, but the Italians, who are very angry at him, 
for everything that's happened to their country. They capture him. Uh, they bring him back into like kind of up in the mountain cities in the north of Italy. And they ended up just uh, hanging him and a couple of his like goonies who were there with him. Um, so he dies very unceremoniously. He's hung upside down. People throw rocks and shoes at him. You can look at the picture online. I was going to include it here, but just for YouTube purposes, we'll just keep rolling. And of course, the fall of Hitler and really Nazi Germany. Um, as it became clear uh, that Germany was nearing defeat, um, you know, Berlin becomes surrounded um, and eventually the forces of the Soviet Union go into Berlin. Um, Hitler hides out in his underground bunker, eventually commits suicide. Um, and in a matter of a week later, the war will be over. And this is kind of an important point too, the race to Berlin. There was a lot of sense of pride of which country was going to be able to hang their flag up. Um, and, you know, along with that, there was going to be intense fighting. Berlin is the capital city. Hitler had pretty much said, man, woman, and child, if you live in Berlin, you will fight to the death, right? And so there was a lot of intense, intense fighting that existed in Berlin. And the United States, we just made the choice and the allies, right, uh, with the United Kingdom, liberated France, the other countries we were like, we're going to let the Soviet Union do the heavy lifting. So there's a lot of intense fighting that happens in Germany and Berlin. And there's a lot of this tension then that exists even years after between Berlin, Germans, and communist Soviet Union. There's a lot of hate there. A lot, a lot of hate there. More so than there's maybe hate for Americans and British. It's because the Soviets hung the flag, the intense fighting, the war atrocities that were happened between Germany the Berliners and the Soviet Union, that creates a lot of issues in the future too when we start talking about the Cold War and how Germany gets treated and really how they get punished after the war. Ultimately, German officially surrenders. Germany officially surrenders on the 8th of, February, uh, the 8th of May in 1945, less than a year uh, from D-Day. And that ends the war. Uh, we often, here in the United States, we call that VE Day. It was a huge celebration. People just partied for days on end out in the streets. Um, but that doesn't mean the war is over, right? While the war in Europe is over, there's still the conversation about what was going to happen in Japan. And we haven't even really talked about that in a while. And that's what our next video is going to be about. So make sure you're uh, on track for that, watching that. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, you guys have a good rest of your day. See you.